those cosmetics in your bathroom cabinets. We started this investigation last series with Piz Buen One Day Long Lotion. It promises perfection from the sun, but as we reported, it can seriously damage the skin. It was a hot day, so obviously put the sun cream on and went to bed that night and woke up covered in a rash. Basically, it was like really bad sunburn, so, so hot. It was just bright red, tiny lumps, they nearly were like fluid filled lumps so they were. Um, just really horrible to look at. Well, at that time, the makers of Piz Buen, Johnson & Johnson, said the numbers affected were small. Really? Over the summer, we've heard from another 150 people suffering the same severe reaction. And we can now reveal that dozens of other products contain the very same ingredient in what a leading dermatologist is calling an allergy epidemic. We may just have experienced one of the hottest summers on record, but for Sophie Holmes, the good weather brings back nothing but bad memories. During a sunny skiing holiday in the Alps this year, Sophie used Piz Buin's one day long sun cream for the first time. This was the result. Blisters, itchy eyes, and a swollen face. I drove back from France. As we were driving, it got worse and worse and worse and started to swell in my face and my neck. So I went straight to A&E in London and they prescribed me with steroids to reduce the swelling because there was a worry that it was restricting my airways um, and could become fatal. But this wasn't the first time this had happened to Sophie. Three months earlier, she'd had a similar reaction, but to an entirely different product, not Piz Buin that time. Instead, a Clarins moisturiser. It was burning and itchy and really hot with sort of red sort of lumps all over my face. So when I reacted to the Piz Buin and thought back to when I had had the reaction to Clarins, I knew that something must be linking the two together. She was allergic to one of the ingredients found in both products, a chemical known as methyl isothiazolinone, otherwise known as MI. I'd never really considered any ingredients that go into products that I use. I'd never heard about MI before I'd had a reaction. Well, we have heard of it. In our last report, a leading dermatologist identified MI as one of two potential causes of the reactions. But that was when we thought the problem was limited to the Piz Buin lotion. A preservative used to prevent products from going mouldy, we discovered MI is in widespread use right across the cosmetics industry. And it really is extraordinary just how many products contain this chemical. I've had a look through my bathroom cabinet and found 16 products from my shampoo to my moisturiser, all of which contain MI. And that's before I've even started on my makeup. And that's fine, providing, like me, you don't have an adverse reaction to it. There's just one problem. Many of you do. For dermatologists in the UK, the expected rate of an allergic reaction from any cosmetic product is 1 to 2% of the people they see. However, according to data from leading clinics across the UK, the rate of reaction to MI is currently running at more than 10%. So that means for every 100 people tested with MI, more than 10 suffer an allergic reaction. It's a figure that has shocked leading dermatologists like Dr. Ian White. The frequency of reactions to MI is unprecedented in my experience. We've never seen anything quite like it. It is a new phenomenon. And at the present time, there's no suggestion that we have reached the top of that frequency or that it is starting to drop. To put that in context, you need only look back to the last time a cosmetic preservative was banned. The European Commission outlawed the chemical when it displayed a 4.5% allergy rate. But with MI, the number is more than double that, 10% and rising. No one has ever, as far as I'm aware, seen anything uh, similar to this occurring in Europe or anyone else, anywhere else. And there could be many more people out there who don't yet know they're allergic to MI. People like Vicky Hall. She's suffered extreme reactions to Piz Buin and two other products, but has never understood the cause. So we've arranged for her to be patch tested. 
free on the NHS, the process involves having 34 substances, including MI, applied to the skin. After two days, any allergic reaction should show up as a small red rash. I joined Vicky and her dermatologist, Dr Chopra, to find out her results. So, Doctor, results are in. Is Vicky allergic to MI or not? Well, shall we have a look? OK, turn around, Vicky, let's find out. Now, this is the template, and number 17's uh, MI. And if we look, MI, you've got a florid red reaction there. How does that feel, Vicky? Is it itchy and sore, like when you actually had the full reaction? Yes, it is. Um, it's, it, it's had tingling, it's had burning. At the moment, I just want to sort of really just pull it off. Now Vicky knows she's allergic to MI, at least she can avoid it. Now I will be able to sort of go looking when I buy cosmetics and household products for that ingredient in the products I buy and use every day. But should Vicky have to stop buying products? If MI is causing reactions in so many people, shouldn't companies simply remove it? Right now, MI is legal and changing the law could take years. But Dr White says with such a high rate of allergic reaction, it's up to the companies themselves to do the responsible thing and simply stop using it. Contact allergy to this permitted preservative is now of epidemic proportions. What needs to happen now is that immediate action needs to be introduced or taken by industry. Certainly, industry should withdraw its use from leave-on products such as moisturising creams and at the same time reduce, at least reduce, the concentrations that they're using in rinse-off products such as shampoos. We need to get back to quite low levels uh, of exposure which will probably be safe for the majority of individuals. Louise Holland reporting there. Dr Ian White is with me now. You talk about an epidemic that we've never seen before. It's really serious, isn't yeah. it? At the moment, 10% of the patients we investigate who have eczema are allergic to this chemical in the UK. And we went, uh, this is one supermarket shop, mm. uh, all those products. If it is that bad, why isn't it being banned? Why aren't manufacturers doing something about it? Well, first of all, as it said in the film, it will take some years before there's a regulatory intervention here. In the interim, it's the onus is on industry to stop using this substance or at least reduce the amounts of this substance that it is using in its products. But overall, there's no evidence of that, is there? Um, it's a new phenomenon. And okay. of course, it takes some while for industry to reformulate, uh, clear the shelves and put the new products on the shelves. But if they are behaving responsibly, how long should it take before they do that? I would have hoped that by this time next year, the majority of the problematic products ought to have been eliminated. And also, if, if somebody has been using one of these products, what, what's the first likely sign that they've got a reaction? Yeah they may suddenly start to develop an itchy skin uh, with redness and then scaling. And straight to a GP? Straight to the GP, but of course stop using the product <laughs> initially. And they can actually just rub a little bit of the product on the forearm several times a day for several days and see if they get a reaction. OK. Dr White, thank you very much. Chris? Thanks, Annie. Let's hear what the companies have to say. Well, first of all, we've got a huge result. Johnson & Johnson say, although their products only contain permitted levels of ingredients, from 2014, all leave-on products containing MI, including Piz Buin One Day Long Lotion, will be discontinued or reformulated. Great news, but what about the other manufacturers we feature in the film? The first product Sophie Holmes reacted to was a Clarins face cream. They say all their cosmetics are tested extensively. All ingredients are approved and all formula are regularly reviewed. They say customer safety is their number one priority. This is echoed by the Cosmetic Toiletry and Perfumery Association who represent the industry. They say they're working with the dermatologists to understand the new information and decide the best course of action. They say amending or removing ingredients is a complex process. They urge anyone who has a reaction to ring the customer care line printed on the packaging. As for the other products we've identified, well, we'll be contacting the manufacturers to see if they're going to follow Johnson & Johnson's lead. We'll let you know how we get on next week.